Hey, what's up? It's Soup here. I've been getting a lot of feedback that I rushed through the rotation section of my 9.2 Kyrian Arcane Fundamentals Guide, so I wanted to share a more detailed rotation commentary that breaks things down slower and in more detail. The Fundamentals Guide covers the Arcane Spellbook and every concept you need to know to play Kyrian Arcane, so if you missed that, you can find that in the top right. I will also be releasing Fundamentals Guides for Frost, Fire, and Mage in general, so if you'd like to be notified when I do, then make sure to subscribe. All right, let's get going. First, I want to go over the 9.2 changes and what effect they will have on the Kyrian Arcane rotation. Starting with the tier set. The two-piece increases your arcane damage dealt to targets with magi on them by 10%, and the four-piece increases the duration of magi to 12 seconds. The two-piece is just a passive damage buff, but the four-piece extending magi to 12 seconds has a couple of interactions. First, it means that magi will need to be planned out 12 seconds ahead to maximize cleave damage. Second, it means that magi last the same duration as rune, so magi can fully benefit from rune. And third, the extra four seconds of magi is probably the reason Arcane Echo is simming higher on single target than resonance. The other 9.2 change will be the addition of the Kyrian Arcane Covenant Legendary Harmonic Echo, which causes your direct damage spells during the Radiant Spark Ramp to proc for an additional 25% damage to your target and up to four nearby targets. The main impact Harmonic Echo has on the rotation is that the Arcane Blast Barrage Snapshot will drop from the Spark Ramp when we gain access to double legendaries. The reason for this is because Harmonic Echo will only proc off one spell for each spark stack. So if you try to snapshot the blast with barrage on the fourth spark stack, Harmonic Echo will proc off the blast and not the barrage. It was brought to my attention that this change also means it's important to make sure you don't spell Q barrage while casting blast for the third spark stack because that causes barrage to be buffed by the third stack instead of the fourth. All this means is don't press barrage until blast has finished casting. These rotation changes only apply with either tier or double legendaries. So until then, the same 9.1 rotation of snapshotting the fifth blast with barrage is still the play. The last thing I want to cover before getting into the rotation is missile clipping. Missile clipping refers to getting extra value from missile bolts by interrupting the missile's channel right after a bolt casts. Basically, this causes the channel to end early while still casting the bolts that should have been interrupted. The effective applications of this that I've used are speeding up barrage stacks by clipping missiles right after the fifth bolt casts and clipping missiles as the global comes up to rapidly spend mana to fish for clear casting procs. All right, cool. Let's get into the rotation. This single target rotation is using Arcane Echo. Starting before the pull, it's important to fish for a clear casting proc using Arcane Explosion because one clear casting missiles plus two regular missiles equals the 18 stacks needed to begin the first Magi ramp. Sometimes you won't get a clear casting proc, but it is important to try. I precast Rune at two seconds on the pull timer, pot, and begin building to 18 barrage stacks. The reason I use pot at this point is because it buffs your missiles during Rune of Power and still lasts long enough for all of Arcane Power. I got a second clear casting proc, so I clip that missile's channel when the global comes up to speed up building stacks. I use Ruby before I start the ramp due to travel time, and then cast Radiant Spark, Magi, Arcane Power, then four Arcane Blasts, and Barrage. After I send the Barrage, I cast Orb, and then build as many Barrage stacks as I can, and send a two-charge Barrage. At this point, I want to go over why I prefer to cast Missiles after Orb for the remainder of Arcane Power over Blast, and this applies when using either Resonance or Arcane Echo. The goal with the rest of Arcane Power is to pump as much damage into Magi as possible for the remaining four seconds, including a global for Barrage. The four seconds gives you roughly two to three globals depending on haste and lag, so the available options are to build stacks with missiles or use Arcane Blast to build charges through either hard casting or Presence of Mind. The reasons I prefer missiles over Blast are because I prefer to use Presence of Mind as Magi ramp insurance for the most part. Missiles has the highest mana cost, so it has the highest chance of proccing clear casting, and it spends its mana up front. Non-clear casting missiles deal 5700 damage over 2.2 seconds versus 6000 damage over 3.2 seconds from both the 2 and 3 charge blast and 5 bolts of missiles buffs barrage by 40% compared to roughly 37% for each arcane charge with my mastery on the PTR. When using arcane echo you definitely want to cast missiles for the rest of magi but even with resonance I think that buffing the 2 charge barrage with stacks makes more sense overall than either using presence of mind or slow 
low casting blast for barrages. Anyways, back to the rotation. After that barrage goes out, I cast missiles until the end of arcane power and then focus on building as many big barrages as I can until 12 seconds before magi. The reason 12 seconds before magi is important is because it takes roughly 9 seconds to build 18 barrage stacks without any clear casting procs. This leaves 3 seconds to cast rune and spark, then magi the same global it's ready. I cast orb and then build barrage stacks instead of charges until 12 seconds left on magi for the same reason as arcane power. At this point, I send whatever barrage I have and then begin prepping for magi. I've changed up the mini ramp opener from 9.1 because of the longer duration of magi and harmonic echo. The fifth blast dropping from the rotation frees up a global and magi's longer duration from the tier set means that you can get more value from rune by casting radiant spark first. I cast radiant spark, rune, magi, and then do the same four blast into barrage ramp. The goal with the remainder of the mini magi ramp is the same as arcane power. Just try to build as big a second barrage as you can so long as it fits into magi. After that, I follow the same rotation of building as many big barrages as I can until arcane power and magi come back up. You can wait until 10 seconds to prep barrage stacks for an arcane power ramp because you don't have to cast rune before magi. All right, moving on to the AoE rotation. Both the arcane power and mini magi openers for AoE are the same as single target. This is an example of what it looks like prepping stacks at the end of a trash pull in Mythic Plus and then running to the next pull. I precast mirror image to avoid threat because arcane has insane burst. I cast spark, magi, and arcane power, then cast arcane explosion, arcane blast, barrage, orb, barrage, and then build as big a barrage as I can until right before magi ends. The reason for this rotation is because harmonic echo doesn't proc from the first direct damage spell after spark. After the magi ramp, I follow the AoE rotation on three plus targets of building arcane charges with arcane explosion and then dumping them with barrage and only casting missiles with clear casting procs. At eight plus targets, you can ignore missiles altogether. Due to harmonic echo, I think the AoE magi ramp you saw here is now the play on three plus targets. You can find the math behind why I think this in the description. With 12 seconds left on Magi, I send the barrage and prep stacks. I use the new opener of Spark, Rune, Magi, and then the new AoE ramp of Arcane Explosion, Blast, Barrage, Orb, Barrage. I also want to show an example of alternate rotations that I think should be used whenever you would lose uses of cooldowns otherwise. Both of these rotations can be done with Spark by itself or with Spark and Rune. This first rotation is the same AoE ramp with Rune and Spark starting with three charges. This sets you up for a four charge Arcane Blast for the first Harmonic Echo proc and as you can see some pretty Pretty good burst. This second rotation uses orb to generate four charges after spark, followed by three arcane blasts and barrage. Harmonic Echo is going to be a very strong addition to Radiant Spark and makes it a great cooldown even by itself. Hopefully this video fills in any gaps left by my fundamentals guide. If you have any questions or feedback, then please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and remember, never stop improving. Peace!